Disney has recently been celebrating its 100 years of magic in the entertainment industry. What better way though to really put a feather in the cap than to release a new big film for the whole family that's incredibly mediocre across the board. I saw Wish. You probably shouldn't. All right, so Wish is, oh my gosh, the star from Wish is here. He's floating around. <laughs> hey, you got my wish. It's, he answered my wish, and that was for you to subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you stick around. I post tons of movie content each and every week. Need the bodies, need the views. Come join me. It's a good time. Thanks, Wish. They hit the button. Okay, yep, piss off. As a father with very little going on in my life, I thought it would be fun to take the kids and the wife out to another Disney film. In fact, we really enjoy Disney movies. We like going to the theme parks. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan. I grew up on Disney. I think many of us have. It's no secret to many, though, that Disney's kind of been slipping in the last five, six, seven years when it comes to quality entertainment. Sure, there's still some decent ones being made. Of course, we, we have our diamonds in the rough, Aladdin. But there's a lot of bad crap coming out lately, too, and it's disappointing. I know it's not because everything's woke and they're appealing to a certain demographic. There's some of that, sure, of course. There's always going to be... Uh, companies will always try to play to the market or the market that they think is there. there. There's no question about that. And you can say that it's disingenuous. You can say that it's all for money, and you'd probably be right. <laughs> Although there's a lot of people that work at Disney and companies that truly feel passionate about what they're putting out. And you should want to get messages out there. You should want to put your expression on the big screen for others to appreciate or be disappointed by. That's not really the issue I have with Disney. I just find them lazy now. I know that they're capable of doing better. And so remaking all of your animated classics as live action, that, that doesn't do any, I don't know why, live action. I don't know why I kind of tripped over that, but that doesn't do anything for me. Shot for shot remaking Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, what are we doing here? At best, you can have a mediocre to serviceable product. You're never going to beat the originals. Why are you even doing it? Take something like Jungle Book, which the live action is far different than the animated one. That's worth telling. That's a story I'll go out and appreciate and watch because you took it in a different direction. So it can be done, of course. It can be done. Then we move to the animation space. I think that Disney's still putting out good stuff. Pixar had Luca, which I thought was fantastic. Turning Red turned a lot of people off. I enjoyed that one. I liked Elemental. So I'm not this like curmudgeon -y, Disney sucks, they should be burned to the ground sort of individual. I just like a good movie and a good story. And unfortunately, Wish is none of that. My kids had no interest in seeing this film. My wife was kind of okay with it but she doesn't go to the theaters anymore because they're raging dumpster fires of awful people so she'll wait for it to come out on disney plus which is exactly where this movie probably should have gone to begin with it looks like a disney plus movie let's talk about the visuals for starters let's talk about the superficial stuff i do not like the look of this film one iota it's not good looking, okay? And I know Disney has some of the top tier, top talented animators across the globe. They put out amazing stuff. Most of their stuff looks fantastic. I don't like Wish's look. It, I see what they're trying to do, right? Disney celebrating its 100 years. This is supposed to be a regal, renaissance-esque throwback to the Peter Pans, the Bambies, uh, you know, the, the Snow Whites, the Sleeping Beauties, and so on. But they're still using 3D. They're still using, and by 3D, I don't mean like you have to wear the glasses. I mean, they're still using non-2D animation, but they're trying to pull it off like it is 2D. They're putting a layer of 2D over everything or giving the illusion of matte paintings and, and flat backgrounds. And that's exactly how this comes out. It comes out as flat and unfinished. It just looks terrible. It kind of reminds me of those crappy Netflix animated movies that aren't Klaus, not the good ones. I'm talking about the animated movies that you've never heard of before. That will just randomly show up trending number one for some reason on Netflix by a company you've never heard of. Uh, it's like a Finding Nemo ripoff or something. And you just look at it and think, wow, okay, this is, I guess, how animators get their start. Certainly not the end game, But man, Wish is just... 
And the thing that sucks is you can see a pretty looking film in there. You can see a Moana or a Frozen. It has the bones, but then they put this filter on it or something and just ruined it. Just gross. Okay, here's my problem with Wish. It doesn't suck and it's not good. It's just sitting in this incredibly mundane conveyor belt corporate production looking shell. And that's the worst place you can be. A movie can be incredibly entertaining if it's a schlocky, bad, stupid time. You can have fun with that, like a Fast and the Furious. There's still at least entertainment to be had by how ridiculously dumb it is. And of course there's entertainment if the movie's well done. The worst kind of movie to watch is a movie like Wish, where it's just all there presented exactly how you expect it. There's no twists or turns you don't see coming a mile away. The jokes are all just so surface level stupid that you can kind of chuckle. And yeah, the audience I, I was with was, they were having a decent time. There was laughs. There was, you know, some sound effects going on from the crowd. But overall, it's just so miserably generic. <clears throat> we have, we follow, um, I have notes here, Asha. Asha. Asha's the, the, the main character. She's just turned 18. And she lives in this fantastical town that was created by a sorcerer. Uh, a man, just a regular guy who really wanted to put good out in the world. And the way he figured out to do it is to actually learn sorcery and he can make magic. And he's the only one. It's forbidden by everyone else. So this guy, played by Chris Pine, who is definitely one of the better parts of this movie. Although the, the voice actress, Ariana who plays um, Asha, she does a great job. She has a she has a solid voice. I mean, again, she's just, it's Elsa, it's Anna, it's Moana. They're all inter interchangeable at this point kind of for me as far as the voice acting goes. It's all very good, but it's also all very familiar. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, yeah, so he kind of built this little utopia where the people in the village are very happy. They're comfortably numb, I guess would be more apt. Because he, every once in a blue moon, will grant a wish from someone. These people can come up to him. They approach him and they say, hey, I want to give you my wish. And they, they literally physically give him his wish somehow with an emotional contract of sorts. So they say like, hey, I want to be able to fly. And he goes, okay, I got your wish, boo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it over here in my secret little area. And, you know, we'll see. Maybe it'll come true. Maybe I'll grant that wish someday down the road. You'll just have to hold tight. Oh, but in the meantime... You won't remember this wish. You will completely forget you ever had this dream. It's gone. Poof. It's it's out of the it's out of the ether. And uh, that that's really the message of the story: is hey, should we rely on others? Should we rely on a fairy godmother or something to grant our wish, or should we pursue it ourselves? It's a fine it's a fine message. It's a fine tale. Usually, you know, Disney has nice messages, and that that's par for the course. However, outside of that, there's <laughs> That, that's the entirety of the film. Asha, Asha's like, s wants to be the apprentice of this guy. She finds out he's sketchy. She's like, he's collecting all these wishes, but he's not really granting them. What is he doing with the wishes? Which is a great question. He really isn't doing shit with them. They're just kind of floating around. Like, give them back. Why don't you give them back if you're not going to grant them? But he's got an ego, I guess. and doesn't want to. And, uh, you know, so she's going to make a wish on a star this little animated friend's gonna come down and they're gonna go on a little misadventure together, try to save all the other wishes. And that's, that's where I die a little bit inside watching. She has a stupid sidekick, Valentino, a goat. Um, obviously he, he, he talks because that's what we do in these movies. He's a deep voice, deep baritone. She's got a bunch of stupid sidekick friends that have their own little quirks. Um, I just, I, I'm sitting in this movie and I wanted to fall asleep like five times. I truly thought it would have been amazing to just sleep in the theater for the first time. <laughs> for the first time in forever. I just sleep. I would just sleep and it would all be over so much quicker. About 45 minutes into the movie, I just thought, you know what? I could leave. I review movies as a side hobby slash second job, but... I don't need to see anymore to know exactly where this is going. There were several times where I thought of just bouncing, but I pushed through. I sat there and suffered with it. Now, do I think you can have a good time with Wish? Eh, 
I guess if you if you are familiar with literally every single Disney movie or if you're not sick of the playbook by now, sure, you can have an okay time with Wish. I don't foresee anyone coming out of this movie though and going, oh wow, that was incredible or what an amazing film. It is just all around incredibly mediocre. The music is all fine. The voice acting is all good. The, the animation is serviceable. I will say in motion, the fluidity, the way that Asha moves around is fantastic. It just doesn't look interesting. I, I don't like the lack of color, the lack of poppiness to it. It's just drab. There are some fun callbacks, I guess. For some people, they might like some of the references to older Renaissance Disney films. <sighs> it's, it, you know, it runs at a kind of a slow pace. It's probably, I would say, an hour and a half, hour 45. I don't, I don't know what these movies run anymore. Everything is too long now. Yeah, hour 35, it says on IMDb. So we have a 90-minute film, which is good. It feels a little longer than that, though, because of just how painstakingly uh, lame it is. <laughs> so no, I, I would not recommend Wish. This is a movie that you watch on Disney Plus when you have nothing else to do, if you haven't canceled Disney Plus yet, because there's really nothing of value on there either. I just, um, I'm disappointed with Disney. I wish they would get back to making some decent stuff again. And listen, I like Frozen. I like Frozen 2. I like Moana. They all fall into the playbook, right? Pretty young woman trying to, you know, have it all, trying to get out of her poor, uh, you know, miserable life. But you got to have something more than that. You got to have an interesting character. You got to have a fun villain like a Gaston or a Scar. You got to have a cool setting. Like that's another thing. Wish is just the most generic bland town people could live in. This village has just a boring ass gray castle. Everything is muted. It just there's nothing about this that says, wow, 100 years of Disney. Look how far we've come. What a celebration. Instead, it's just a participation. It's just, hey, we're here. We're doing another one. You remember remember when Elsa pulled her, her ponytail back and ran up the staircase and, and like did the shimmy shake at the camera and she's all sassy. And then Moana did the same thing where she kind of threw her hair back and she parted the waters. Well, Asha does this 18 times. The camera's going to spin around her like it's a fucking Michael Bay movie. And she's going to be singing up at the stars and moving that hair and the wind's going to be throwing her this way and that. It's so formulaic i'm done give me something different disney try a little bit harder dig a little bit deeper princess and the frog reference you gotta dig a little deeper okay that's wish i wish i hadn't wasted my time watching it i kind of knew from the trailer what i was getting into and yet i still pushed through and th said yeah let's let's do this dance let's see how far this rabbit hole goes and it turns out it doesn't go anywhere past the surface. Very surface level, generic crap. I expect more from Disney. I think we all do at this point. Let me know if you saw Wish though. Is this a wish come true for you? Is this a dream that you were hoping would become a reality from Disney and they would make something so bland and so lame that you could go, yep, this is what I wanted. This is what I paid for. Side note, side little tangent. I, I, I feel very sad for the people that have a, a decent sized family who went to Wish, or really any movie at this point in time, because it is expensive. So I go to the Regal, I have a Regal Pass, 20 some bucks a month, 24 bucks a month. Great, great deal, right? 24 bucks, go to as many movies as you want. Anytime I bring a kid though, I have two children, or the whole family, I think the price per ticket is 11 or $12 for a regular showing. If you go to IMAX, it's like 18 bucks, 18 bucks for one person. So if I just took my daughter, which we did a double feature just recently, I'm free. She's 12 bucks a ticket. Plus if we get a drink, it's like another $8. I spent like $22 just to take her to one movie. Now, now do that for a family. Cause in the row next to me, there was a father, a, a wife, and I think three kids, say one of them has the Regal Pass and they're covered. That's being generous. 
you have four bodies there. You're spending 50 some dollars just to get into this movie. Now add an icy for each of them or throw a popcorn in there. They're spending like a hundred dollars to see Wish. One of the kids was sleeping. That kid was passed out when the movie started. That's a good use of your money. What a waste. Hey, we got to get out of the house and away from the TV set so that we can sit in a worse location in front of the TV. I, I, I don't know. What happened? I know I'm getting older. I just turned 41 today. Happy birthday to, to me. Um, this is what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> God, that's sad. But, but I do remember back in the day when it was like $4 or 450 for a matinee and it was six or seven bucks for a, a regular showing. Now it's, there's no matinee price anymore. It's all 11 or $12 and the price of concessions is out of control. So I feel bad for families that have to do this. I, my kids don't care that much to go to the movies anymore, which breaks my heart because that used to be my favorite pastime was going to movies. And it's just, it's dead in the water at this point with all the streaming services and the poor conditions and the overpricing. And it's just not there anymore. The magic's gone. And that's kind of where Disney's at. The magic is gone. I wish that weren't the case, but it is. Anyway, tangent aside, let me know. Put it in the comments if you saw this film, if you have any desire to see it, or you're going to be like most and probably wait for it to crap out on Disney+. Plus. Please like the video if you haven't. Subscribe if you haven't. I want to get the subscription numbers up this year and into 2024. It's going to be a big push for subscriptions. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Uh, jump on the podcast where these also go on Apple and on uh, Spotify. If you really like what I'm doing, become a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. One man operation would love to have you or you can be a join member on YouTube. There's even a super thanks button under each video on the channel where you can just say, hey, Adam, here's like four bucks. Great job on the video. There's a super thanks for you. And those really help. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for watching or listening. And hopefully I see you next time.